Hey. Hey, it's Joel. Stuck at home. You too? Let's be productive. Let's take this opportunity while we're stuck at home to learn and, and advance a skill or make some art or do both. 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 Both is good. We are going to design ourselves a strawberry pot in Fusion 360 and you're going to learn something and you're going to you're going to enjoy the time in which you do it. I'm excited about this. No sleeping. Wake up. Get your coffee. Let's do this right here on 3D Printing Nerd. That's right. That's right. A 3D printable strawberry pot. Uh, strawberry pot. Uh, strawberry pot. I used Fusion 360 to design these and to iterate my design and to find one that would work really great. And my idea was to build a strawberry pot as a single print, as uh, something that required no support, and something that could stack reliably right on top of each other. So knowing those constraints, let's dive into Fusion 360. Listen, listen, don't, don't get scared. Don't run away. I promise you, I promise this is going to be a lot easier than you think it is. I spent, well, here, let me show you. <laughs> there's some stuff. Uh, there's some stuff. There's some stuff. And, and then I started refining the process. So uh, Fusion itself, super duper scary. I get it. But I spent hours and hours and hours learning, perfecting, and doing something. And I got it down to where I could create something uh, pretty quick. And I know the steps. And there's going to be some cool things to learn. So we're going to learn about, well, sketches, of course. We're going to use sketches to do this. We've got um, an offset plane, projection, lofts, shells, a plane through two edges, projection from a body edge, circular patterns, rectangular patterns, setting pivots, pipes, cuts, it's all going to be there. Uh, oh, and also, before we get started, I mean, look. <laughs> the fine folks at Micro Center saw my last broadcast where I had on that really, really terrible headset, and they actually felt bad for me. They felt really bad, and they thought, look, if you're going to be doing some more videos from your desk, it's probably a good idea for you to have a, a decent headset. And so they sent over, where's the box? Uh, a Logitech, a Logitech Pro, Logitech Pro. They sent that over. Thanks for that. Micro Center. That's really, really nice of you. I hope this audio is coming through really well. It also means that we'll be able to power some better streams. I'm pretty excited about that. But listen, we need to talk more about Fusion 360 and this strawberry pot. So I went online and I looked at strawberry pots and my wife had a strawberry pot. And so we decided to, to plant some in this greenhouse. And 3D printing solves problems, right? Can you 3D print a strawberry planter? I'm sure you can. Can you design one? That's the ticket. So first of all, let's go back. Let's go back. So first of all, I started with sketches that looked like that. And I was I was kind of scared. So then I mean I, I was able to make something that looked like that, but look at all those all those bodies over there. And I mean, it's some red stuff down there. It's terrible. So I started thinking about it a little bit different. And well, you can see that there's some some holes in there. So that'll be fun to talk about. Then I started to get down the sketch. And, and I, I really tried to go forward from the point that do as little work as possible for the most benefit. And I think this is definitely an exercise in this. So by the time we were done, we came up with this shape. And what's great is it took me just minutes to do rather than the hours and hours of learning. And so I get to show you now. So rather than you taking hours and hours, you could build this or you could build upon this or around this or using the skills that I show you, you can build something yourself. So it's a blank Fusion 360 uh, uh, document, I guess. And let's get started. So first of all, for the strawberry planter, you've already seen it, but we, we need to start with some sketches and uh, the sketches allow us to kind of pre-plan. There's gotta be some cool ways to do this, uh, but I'm just gonna start right here. So I'm gonna click this plane. C for center circle, and I'm going to click and drag out and then type 50, 50, and hit enter. You're with me so far, right? Okay, good. Now what I want to do uh, off this is create a couple legs, and you'll know why once we get it done, but uh, hit L for line, and you're going to go out five millimeters over here, and you're going to go out, let's see, L for line, and you're going to go out five millimeters here. And then just click that check mark right there. Now what we want to do is create arc, three-point arc. I'm going to click here, here, 
And then what I want to do is bring that arc out until these sides touch right here. See? So it touches the, the 15 millimeters. So we've got we've got this this three-point arc that's essentially building this section of a circle right off of the center circle. That's it for that sketch. It's pretty easy, right? So now that you have that done, go ahead and finish over here, drop it down, hit the right mouse button, and do create an our, uh, offset plane. And this is where we're going to create the thing that's above. So this plane right here that we're working on, this sketch is the bottom of this pot. We want to build now the top of the pot. And I'm going to put it 150 millimeters in the air. There it is right there. It's really hard to judge scale in fusion, just so you know. So make sure you take measurements. But 150 millimeters in the air is going to be, let's see, six inches. So in, in weird units, it's going to be six inches. So right mouse button here, create sketch. And now what we want to do is do something called projection. Projection is cool. And it allows you to take geometry or sketches from one plane and move it to another or copy it to another, essentially. So I'm going to go create, project, and project. So what you do is you, you're you on the plane you want to work on and you project from other planes that are visible. And I'm going to project this circle. That's easy, right? I mean, there I could have just created one on there, but projection is cool and we'll get to use it a little bit later. Now what I'm going to do is hit L for line. I'm going to bring these legs out to the 50 millimeter point and hit that. And I'm going to bring legs out to 50 and then hit that. Now we're going to go back to the three point arc. We'll go here, here, and we'll bring it out until the sides are at uh, 100 millimeters. There we go. That looks good. And I'm going to click. Okay, we're done. So at this point, we've created nearly all of the sketches that are needed. It's, it's great. From here, what you want to do is a loft. So in Fusion 360, a loft takes a sketch from one plane, essentially, and creates three-dimensional geometry to a sketch on another plane. Let's see, you're going to finish the sketch. You're going to go up to Create and Loft. It's right there. So there's profiles over here. It shows profiles right here. And these are the profiles that you loft between. So what I'm going to show you is a very simple, just two-profile loft. It should be easy. So click this one. And then click this one. Cool, right? It creates that 3D geometry between these points. What's kind of interesting is it has these lines. So it follows uh, uh, points on the sketch and it tries to align those with other points on the sketch. And the reason that we created those five millimeter lines out to the side is because we had these longer lines out here. And so where this line ends, it's able to translate that down to here. And that's why we did that. But we have uh, this lobe, this section. It looks good. It's a new body. I'm going to hit OK. The sketch has disappeared. That's OK. You can always turn them on if you need to. Now what we need to do is hollow it out just a little bit. And the command that you're going to use is literally called uh, shell right here. I was going to say it's called hollow, but it's not. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go modify shell. It's looking for the faces or the body. I'm going to click this top face right here. Now it's asking for the inside thickness. So it's going to create a shell and it's going to create a certain amount thick towards the inside. And this one, I want two, two millimeters. And in fact, all of the walls in this model, I'm going to try to standardize around two millimeters. So it's cool when you do a, uh, a shell, you get to see the bottom. It leaves the bottom. So it takes that face and it takes it down. And so it leaves a, in our case, a two millimeter shell around the outside and a two millimeter base at the bottom. So neat. So that's almost like uh, one of our flower pots, right? It's, it's, it's an easy way to make a flower pot. I know there are other easier ways, but this is, this is a good way as well. Let's, let's try this just to kind of give you an idea of where we're going. We're going to talk about a circular pattern. So if I go create pattern, circular pattern. So we can choose bodies or we can choose features or components or faces. We're going to do bodies. And the object that we're clicking is this one. And then the axes is going to be the axis, it's, or the axes, it's going to do the rotation or the pattern around. And because this is circular, it's going to go around a single axis. And I'm going to click this one, which is Z or Z. And it's going to give me the quantity, the number of times it's going to have something around there. And this is being built for four. So if we do four and we hit OK, kind of cool, right? So that's what it's going to look like, but we don't want to do that quite yet. I'm just going to take the timeline and back it up just a little bit. Now what I want to do 
is do some changes on here. So you saw what it looked like before, where it looks like that, but I want to create some holes right here because soil is going to go in and I want all the soil to kind of be able to collect in the middle and the roots of the plants are going to be able to go that way as well. So we need to create a hole right here. So let's back this up. So to put a hole on the surface, it's not exactly the easiest thing to do because it's curved, but now we can do something which is kind of really cool. So you go to construct and then you say plane through two edges. There's edge one and there's edge two. And I'm going to hit okay. So look at that. We have a plane that exists right across those two edges, which is perfect because then we can create sketches on that plane and then send it through the model to make some cuts. But we need to do some projection again. So if we want to do things that interact with this body, we have to make sure that we have the contours of this body and the lines from the body. So on this plane, I'm going to hit right mouse button and say create sketch. So now that we have our sketch open, we can create sketch lines that will cut through that. I'll show you what I initially did and then what I learned. So on this sketch, what I want to do, let's just say I want to I want to create a line that goes from this side to that side and then I'm okay, right? You would think that's okay, but look, 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 look. This 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 line of the the body isn't actually on a point that uh, that I can go to. See, it goes on either side of that. And so what I need to do is use projection. And it's kind of cool. Go up to create, project include, and then project. And then what usually you can do is pick the lines that you want to project. But if I just hold it in the center, what it's going to do is choose all of these lines for me, including the curved lines. And here's the best part. Because it's being projected, it will flatten out those curves. Watch. Now, if I turn off the body, look at that. So on our sketch, we have flat lines that directly correlate with the body's geometry. And now we can do some sketching. And so we know that I want to create some holes. And um, the base of it is two millimeters thick. So let's, let's go down here and let's hit L for line. And then let's just create a line that uh, attaches to both sides there. I'm going to hit D for dimension and click here click here, bring it out, and I'm going to do two. So there we go. We know it is two millimeters up from the top. And when we're creating our hole in this body, then we'll know it won't go too low. So now at the top, uh, let's see, what's a good way to do it? You know, let's just, let's make something cool. So how about, how about we bring it to, we go right over to here, and we go up, and then that little triangle up there is showing us the center point of the line. So let's go there. And then let's bring it down here, just like that, and then hit that. So now we've got this little kind of curve that, that goes right up the top. That's kind of neat. Uh, and then we have this space down here. And we have these projected lines on the side, so we're done. So hit Finish. And now if I click this and hit E for Extrude and bring it back, it's going to cut just like that. And then hit OK. Look at that made a thing. Kind of neat. But let's go back a little bit because we want to adjust things. So let's go back to this sketch here on the line. I'm going to right click and hit edit. What I want to do is, let's see if I can, can you grab, there we go. Let's bring it down just a little bit. Let's bring that down just a little bit. Will it? Okay. So again, I'm learning, <laughs> I'm learning all sorts of things. So let's, let's just do that. So I want to change it just a little bit and uh, let's bring a line right across here, just like that. And then why don't we just freeform kind of bring it over to here. So there's that triangle again. There we go. And then let's finish. And then if we go here and we hit edit feature, we can uncheck the ones and hit OK. So look, there we have a hole. So before, remember, this arc went all the way to the top of the model, but we went back and changed it. not to, And it automatically was able to pick up from the slack. We, we, we were able to change it. We adjusted the extrusion. And because of the history down here, we were able to, to get it working. So that looks pretty good. That looks really, really good. So now if I do this, <laughs> that history marker is really cool. So that operation to do the pattern, 
uh, because we started, we went back and we did some cool things. What's great is it can still do that operation. And so we just moved the marker forward. So at this point, we're, we're getting pretty close. I know that we should probably give it a butt, you know, a bottom. So let's turn on sketch one, click right here, hit E and hit two, two millimeters. And over here, it's going to say join. That's correct. And let's hit OK. And if I turn off sketch one, look at that. It's fully sealed at the bottom. And we happen to have four lobes that look pretty good. Now what I want to do is kind of give it uh, a ledge or an edge or a rim or something at the top, some straight, uh, straight extrusion, essentially, just to kind of give it a lip. I don't want it to just be a corner and that's it. I want it to come up and then go straight, just, just like that. What's kind of neat, here's what we can do. Because this is a face, we can select it. There we go. Hit E for extrude. And now what we can do is type 5. It will bring it up just like that. And join is the operation, which is proper, and then hit OK. Look at that. Kind of cool, right? I mean, we're getting there. OK, for this part, let's see. We need to make some drainage holes. But here's my idea. So I went with the thought that these could then stack. And so if one was stacked this way, one could turn 45 degrees and stack the other way. And I have a kind of a neat way, I think, of doing that. So let's start first with the top. So let's turn on sketch two, and then let's right click and edit sketch two. So what I want to do first, and this is the top, is I want to create some pegs that stick out. And so uh, let's do this. Let's hit L for line, and then hit over here for construction, because this isn't going to be something that we do anything with. This is just to kind of give us some distance. I'm going to come up here right there. Sure, right there. It's the center point of that line. It gives us a point that we can take action on. I'm going to hit C for circle. I'm going to go right here and I'm going to bring it out four. That's great. So now because uh, construction was selected, you can select your circle. You can hit that button and it's back to being a normal circle that you can work with. There we go. So finish that sketch and it's down there. But what I want to do is extract, or extrude, I'm sorry, I want to extrude. So I turned off the body, and I'm going to click right, let's see, right here, and then right here. And it's because there was a real line there. So I had to click on both sides of it. It kind of bisected it. And then turn on bodies, hit E for extrude, and I'm going to bring it up. So remember, we did that one that was five millimeters, that top. So now let's bring it above that, another five. Let's go, let's go 10, 10 millimeters. And then the operation, we don't want it to be a cut. We do want it to be... Well, we want it to be a new body, and I'll show you why. Okay. Hit OK. There we go. And then, uh, because this is something that's going to stick into the bottom of the pot, I want to make sure that it's, it's pretty easy to do. So let's click that edge, hit F for fillet, and just bring it down a little bit. How about one? Bring it down one millimeter. Hit OK. Well, that looks pretty good. Looks like it's resting in a nice spot. Uh, you know what? I want it over here and over here and over here. And here's where we can do another circular pattern. So create pattern and circular. So instead of bodies, we're going to click on features and we can pick things down here. So we had the extrude, but also we had that, uh, that fillet. So hold down shift and click right there. It works. The axes, uh, it's going to be that Z axis as well, that blue one. So I'm going to rotate and click it. I'm going to choose quantity of four and hit OK. Yes. Look at that. They're all right there. They're all right there. What we need to do is now bring these holes down to the lower sketch and we need to bring them out here. So they need to kind of be out here. Now, remember, this is a 50 millimeter diameter circle. So then it was 50 millimeters from that center point plus 12 and a half out to that point. So turn off bodies. Turn on sketch one, right click sketch one and edit. So remember, we went out this way because we wanted to put it on top. So what you need to do is rotate at 45. So what we can do is rotate it this way just so we can work on it. Now hit L for line, click that construction button. We're going to bring it out this way and it's going to be 50 plus 12.5, so 62.5. And the angle will be 45. But because it's judging it from there, it's going to be 180 minus 45, so 135. And just like that, this dot, this dot right here is where we need to make the opening for those posts to be able to go through. So hit C, uncheck construction. I remembered this time. 
click where that point is, click and bring it out. Now, remember, we're talking about 3D printing, and so if, if we make this four millimeters, it won't necessarily fit just as good. Um, in my tests, I did 4.1, 4.2. If we do 4.5, we should be fine. We should be fine. Well, let's finish that sketch. Now what we need to do is select it. Let's turn on the bodies. Let's hit E for extrude, and let's bring it up. Now remember, we're operating on the bottom of the model, and so we're extruding up, and we're cutting into the model. See, right there. Hit OK to cut. I bet you know what's coming next. This is uh, this is when we do uh, a circular pattern. So create pattern and circular pattern. So feature, again, we're going to choose this one. And the axis is going to be the blue one right there. Let's see, can we select that? There it is. And quantity four and hit OK. Well, there we go. That's really, really not too shabby. That is really not too shabby. I kind of like that. Uh, we probably could add some drainage holes. I'm not going to go through that at this point because you know, you know the way to do this. You edit a sketch, you add the holes you want for drainage, and then you extrude those new holes into the body, and then you do a circular pattern to bring them all around. Problem solved. Oh, we're not done. No, 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 we're not done. So this is great. Uh, I, and I hope you understood how we went through this. This took me hours and hours and hours to do before, but I was able to refine the process and learn the proper, or at least the, the ways that worked better. And so when I'm not talking to you, I can get this done in a couple minutes now, which is great. Plus that 150 millimeters, I mean, it could be shorter, it could be taller. It just depends on the 3D printer that you have, the post holes, uh, because I standardized everything at two millimeters, the walls where they come together right there is four millimeters. And that's why a four millimeter post works. This section right here, the uh, the hole, the hole right there. It's uh, it really, I mean, it's, it's up to your creativity. It's however you want to make it. And the only thing from here on out is I might add some, uh, some fillets down here just to kind of give it a curve at the bottom. But essentially, essentially we're done. We're done. Oh, but wait a minute. Wait a minute. Pipes. Pipes. We didn't cover the pipes. This is cool. So let's go to, I'm going to bring it back. Let's see. Ah, right here. Okay. And turn on sketch one. Okay. Here we go. So I had an idea and before I opened it up for the soil to come in, I thought, uh, what if I did some tiny little holes, tiny little holes, and that way you could add water in the middle and the water would be able to disperse out to the strawberry plants or the herbs or whatever you're growing. And so I started looking up stuff and this guy right here, this guy right here, desktop makes 12.3K subscribers. That's obscene. This guy needs a lot more. And I went looking for ways to make holes in stuff in a circular pattern. And he showed me this really cool way via this video right here. And I took that instead of doing this method, I I, I took from that and I did it my own way. And so I, I just a just a huge thanks to him for the inspiration. But now let's let's clear him out of the way because we have to get to work. Here's what I want to do. I want to create a bunch of tiny little holes in here. And if I just make them straight through, because this is curved, they're going to be these weird holes. I want the holes to match the curvature. And this isn't a case for projection. Uh, and if there's a better way to do this than what I show you, obviously let me know, but I'm going to use pipes. So on this sketch right here, let's see, I want to edit that sketch and I'm going to hit L for line. I'm going to take it from center and I'm going to go out, bring it out to here because that's fine. You want it to go further than the boundary of the 50 millimeter circle. Uh, and you want it to be at 45 degrees or in this case, 180 minus 45. And I'm going to click, I'm going to finish the sketch. There's our line. I'm going to click that. I don't know if I need to do it yet or not, but I'm going to go up to create and pipe. So what that does is it creates a cylinder along a path. You can make it hollow if you want. I don't want this to be hollow, but I want is three millimeter holes. Awesome, right? Don't choose cut yet. New body. Okay. I hope you follow me. So then hit okay. So look, we've got this, uh, there's two bodies here. We have this pipe. We have this pipe 
and it is uh, sticking out past the perimeter of this 50 millimeter circle. So then I think you probably know what we're going for here, right? Because if this pipe can create one hole, so click on the pipe and hit M for move or copy. Instead of faces, you want it to be bodies. Click this set pivot and then click the back wherever it should be, right? Just like that. See how the arrow's pointing up and back and over. Now what you need to do is hit that green check mark because that's just something you need to do. Bring it up. Let's see, did I get this right? Uh, bring it. Uh, here's a thing. So these sketches, uh, you, oh my goodness. These sketches, they have, uh, uh, they constrain things, right? And they have uh, constrainments or constraining or whatever. So if you click in this middle, look, there are all of these that are holding stuff to the middle. So I'm going to right click and hit a coincident. Jeez, constrainment, coincident. I can't even get words right. Okay, maybe that's it. Because if a circle is there, you can't move a center circle when it's constrained to origin. So now maybe it'll work. So I'm going to hit M for move not sketch objects, it's gonna be bodies. And I'm gonna click this body here, set pivot back here and hit the green X or check mark. And now, ha <laughs> ha So look at that. If you make a sketch object from center origin and then you're trying to move something away from that, there is a coincident that you need to remove first. Just remember that. But hey, I'm gonna move it up 10 millimeters. I'm gonna hit okay. Do the same thing, hit M for move and copy and select that body, but we're gonna create a copy. Set the pivot to right here again, and then hit that. And now when we rotate, it creates a copy. So let's put it right there and hit okay. I bet you know what we're gonna do from here too. M for move and copy. We're gonna pick that one, set the pivot. It's gonna be back here green check mark, create copy, rotate just like that, and then hit okay. So there we go. That's really all we need to do. That's the hard part. See how it's sticking out right there? I showed you a circular pattern. So now what I want to show you is something called a rectangular pattern. So create pattern and rectangular. And that's where you can uh, move things in certain directions or groups of things. And so bodies is selected. I want to select the objects. So one and two and three. Let's see. And the direction. And let's see. Oh, direction. There it is. And I want to go on this axis because that's the movement. And so now if I go like this, it's starting to create three. Well, I want more than that. So what about four, five, six, seven, eight? Look at that. I can create all sorts of patterns here. Uh, I can also go, I think, if I wanted to. That's how you create a whole pattern of things uh, up and down or left and right. So let's just not do that one right there. But hit OK. Now look at a bunch of new bodies over here and a bunch of them are sticking out. So now we can use those as tools to cut into this. So go up to modify and uh, com combine. There it is. So the target body, this is the thing you want to perform actions on. It's going to be this one. And the tool bodies, that's just the rest of them. So go here, click shift, or I'm sorry, click here, hold shift, click here. And that selects all of those new pipe bodies that you just created. Operation is cut, hit OK. And look, we made a bunch of proper holes because we were able to pivot them, it means that they exist as the right way. They're not straight through a curve. They're actually out at the uh, along the, the arc of it, the arc of it. But remember, these are all operations that are linked together. So uh, if we just keep going this way, oh wait, uh, okay, so we did that. It means that this one right here, we don't want it. So what we can do is suppress it or delete it. I'm gonna delete it. And now when it does, the circular pattern. <gasps> Look at that. So now if we bring it out all the way, there we go. Look at that. We just changed the inside of it. Well, here's where it gets kind of cool. These are meant to stack on top of one another. And remember, we put a bottom on there, right? And if we can find, let's see, which one was that? Was it this one right here? So now what if I uh, suppress it? Now we have a straight through section. So let's say you had something like this and you were stacking them and you wanted to go tall. What you could do now is use a two inch pipe or a PVC pipe down the middle to hold them all together. 
And then what you would need to do is make sure you have some drainage holes here, right? You want those drainage holes. And then that would give you stackable strawberry pots. Well, there we go. I hope that there was some interesting Fusion 360 techniques in there that I was able to show you. Again, this was me. I spent, uh, I was up until uh, 4 a.m. one night just because I was learning and trying to figure it out. And then I figured out a few things, figured out a few other things. And by the next day with my coffee, I was like, bam, 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 I got it going. And so I hope this empowers you to be able to create something that's really cool that does something like this, that's practical around the house, this is super practical. And now we got to go put some dirt in it and plant us some strawberries. Let's go. Yay. Here we go. This one finished printing, and so I get to do the planting. Uh, and that's Riley on camera. Hi, Riley. Hi. <laughs> we have strawberry starts here. One of the things that people are probably going to ask is if it's okay to use PLA for something like this. And honestly, I just I don't know. I assume it is. I assume PLA is okay, but uh, your mileage may vary. And so try it in PLA. If it doesn't work, then try it in a different material. So with strawberry starts, let's see, where's a good one? Look at that one. With strawberry starts, you want to make sure the top of it is level with your soil. How am I doing, Riley? Good. Awesome. I'm not the best at planting, but I think I'm doing okay. Looks pretty good. I'm going to go put this one in the greenhouse. That was cool, right? That was cool. We used Fusion 360 to iterate a design and come out with something that we knew would work. And then after printing prototypes, we got our final one. And then we were able to print it out and put some dirt in it and some strawberry starts. And my wife, thank you for that, by the way, my wife being the one that planted those, we were able to plant those strawberry starts and get them in the little makeshift greenhouse we got off Amazon. That's great, right? A lot of people are home right now. And a lot of people are trying to just get by. Legit, I feel you. I totally feel you. I get you on this. But this is a wonderful time to be able to learn a skill or make some art or do something like this, right? And thinking about that, I was up until four o'clock in the morning trying to design the first iteration of this. You know, learning and using Fusion 360 is almost like a muscle and it gets weaker when you don't use it that much. And since I hadn't been using it that much, I was trying to get through it and I did. And then I was up till four in the morning, like I said, and I went to sleep and then I woke up, had my coffee and I came back to it and I thought I can do this better. And I learned it. And that's why I learned all about projecting uh, sketch lines. Uh, let's see, lofting and shells and circular and rectangular patterns. Uh, and pipes and pivoting and uh, a plane across two edges. How cool is that, right? We did all that in Fusion 360 and we created things. And these are useful things. These are practical things. Yes, I know plenty of times 3D printing can be used to make non-practical things. I do it all the time, but not, you know, when you could print something practical that's of use to you, it is a really great feeling. And it's even better when you design that thing yourself. And that's where I get excited about all of this. I get to design these things and then print them out and try them out. And thanks to my experience in doing that, I get to tell you the easiest way that I found to do it. I mean, obviously there's going to be plenty of you out there that are gonna be like, oh, Joel, why don't you try it this way? And I get it, I totally get it. But listen, if you have a better way of doing it, I'd love for you to produce a video showing me a better way to do it. That's my challenge to you during this time when so many people are at home. Well, good luck to you and yours. Stay safe, stay healthy, make and create and do all sorts of wonderful things. Wash your hands because I love you. And as always, high five.